I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Good evening. It's was it twenty six April? Yep. March twenty sixth at seven oh eight in the evening. We're gonna start the conservation meeting tonight. Um let's see. State your names. We'll start with Mr. Clark. Bob Clark. Mark Sotier. Sandra Simon. Rick Madden. Art Edgerton. Scott Clobbin. Mr. Keller. Yes. All right, please note this meeting is being made available to the public through video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Uh, I think that's all I have to read off of this page. Yep. Okay. All right. Is it quite 710? Is that clock right? Or? Yeah, it's 710. Okay. Okay, well, let's do the meetings in a minute. Before. I don't actually have them because I was not here that no, night. I got to myself to I'll, I'll make, a, but I'll I'll make a motion to accept the minutes I haven't of the meeting. Them yet. Me a March twelfth. So, so we have a second. Second. Actually, Rick said he hadn't yeah. read them yet. I haven't read them. Like to save them for a few minutes, um, if possible, to read them. knows what's going on. Is there anything about uh, the Greek? Can you just make a quick? I haven't read them yet, so okay. I. I but anybody clue. might know. If uh, there's anything about the coke to be piping at the Herring Park, um, there's already trees. Something in there. Hmm? About the trees. The no, trees yeah, below the Herring Park. Not, um, not the not coke. Piping. Okay. Oh, good thing you said that. We, you are on the agenda with the BPW on April 9th. Good. Excellent. Um, what about the actual piping for the stove at the Herring Shack at the um, that's in here. That's in here? Oh, no, that's three pine. Never mind. Does that come up yet? That's what I'm asking. No, I don't think so. No, I think Bill Bolter is handling that with Tracy. Okay, good. So it doesn't need to be in there. I'm good. Good. Okay. I'll take the motion now. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting for March 12th. Everybody? Aye. 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 Minutes all set. Okay. Oh, it's got to be 710. Looks like 710 on the clock up there. Okay. 710, notice of intent for 230 Water Street, map E15, lot 12, Stracto, DEP file, SE 561008. And we have a letter from Steinbeck and Taylor. On behalf of our clients, Crazy House Hoss LLC, we are reporting to the Commission that on Monday, March 19th, the project went before the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board, with both boards voting to close the matter. The Zoning Board of Appeals will issue a finding on the lot area and frontage, which will not affect the design, and the Planning Board will issue conditions relative to some of the general site details, none of which will affect the proposal, proposed drainage design. We are revising the plans. Note that the cedar trees will be planted as requested by the commission. Right. We believe that as a result of the other boards closing the project that the commission can now vote to close the hearing and issue orders of conditions on the project. We, we thank the commission for their time and their courtesy regarding this matter. Then we have another letter that Rachel got today. Um, dropped the plans off for 230 Water Street this afternoon, fully stamped the only material change to the plans is we deleted the fire truck turn sheet and inserted construction sequence sheet, which is more applicable to the project since it covers erosion control. And we made sure the trees are eastern red cedar on sheet eight. Wait. Move it close. 
just correct uh, to white. We'll do red if they want, but white if they can. I see. Absolutely. Great. We have, a, we have a motion to close. Seconded. Everybody vote. Aye. 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 Will we go according to plan with all of the yeah. standard boil plate. plate things on here. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. Boil plate, exactly. Vote on that. <coughs> okay. We need a second on that. I'll second Mr. Clark's motion. And a vote from everybody? Aye. 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 Vote didn't pass, Rachel. Thank you very much. Okay. Unanimous. All right, we got a few minutes before the next one. Does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss? How many minutes? We have eight, eight minutes. <laughs> uh, Rick Madden, uh, representing the North, North Atlantic White Cedar Restoration Project. I uh, started at the 300. Um, I have scheduled, if possible, um, to meet with the Water Department. DPW. DPW is that the Water Department? Is yep. that who is control that? Um, I would hope we get all the support. It's the a, a vital thing to do at the Rotary Bog. I planted one tree there. I planted roughly 1,500 at the other location. Um, standard loss of bare root is roughly 75%. We have more than that because the drought killed more. We had heavy foal problems there and some deer. Um, the one tree at that bog site that is at McQuan Pond, McQuan Street, at the Rotary. The one tree has outgrown the other trees, three to one, has had no predation, it's a single tree, because the voles can't take over. Plymouth, at their project, they fenced out all the predators. The voles ate, like, out of 15,000 trees, about 8,000 of them in two years. That's a vole-free zone. And also, there is no better way to prepare a bog for going back to nature um, you can flood it during the stage of the invasive red maple when it's in bloom for two weeks, which doesn't hurt the cedar trees but kills the other vegetation. Um, that's a perfect scenario for eradicating one invasive species, putting in the right, the right species to repopulate. I feel that is the best choice and that would be my first choice. It's accessible, it's to the public, people can drive by every day and view their work and <coughs> watch them grow instead of at a place where there also there's other buildings and people and business going on. I think it's a better location by far for the Cedars. That makes it my number one choice. Um, I'm doing a talk, meet and greet on the <coughs> Habama, no, the uh, Mattachese Garden Club uh, open meeting, their annual meeting. It's going to be filmed by art. We're going to do a presentation on the Cedars. They are backing it. Uh, New England Village will be also backing and planting. Uh, the Blooming Place, its whole crew, they uh, sponsored it the first time and they're all going to come. We have the Barrett School for the Blind showed up last time, we're inviting them. I would like to get this project up going and on schedule for Arbor Day 2027, 28th and 29th, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I have people that will come from um, north part of the state, a crew of eight. They do regular tree planting and they can easily handle the 500 trees in me alone. We will have to have at least that. What was the date you said on that, April? Arbor Day, 8, uh, 4, 27, 28, and 29. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Rain day will be the weekend following. But I think I'll plant trees in the rain. It's a perfect day. Um, so we, it would involve, you know, a little hustling. We'd have to um, make it handicapped accessible because I don't need anybody on the bench when I do a project, number one. It's, uh, I've been handicapped before for 18 years, and it's no fun. So I would incorporate... <laughs> What we used at the other site, 12, at that site, and prep would be done on Friday. And uh, there's a myriad of other sponsors that uh, will come aboard. So I think 500 to 1,000 trees is absolutely doable, no problem. That's my opinion. And uh, these are not bare root trees. These are in tubes like that can. Okay. Take a bar, stick it in the ground, put the tree in, give it a stomp, you're done. Right, so that's what you'll um, propose to DPW on April 9th is yes. 5,000 trees? And I'm hoping to have one that, one thousand the paperwork one done. Thousand trees. I'd like the 1,000 trees. A thousand. And the cost of trees will be uh, from Pineland Nurseries, New Jersey. We had a cost of, I think it was $1.15 to 30 cents. Like, I don't remember the price. Right, well, it was right in there. That could be quickly done. These trees can be ordered and delivered 
instead of bare root, they have to cut them when they cut them, and you get them, and then you have to try to save them, and it's it's not like a bare root tree, as you know. So the ability to order them, we can find it right away. We're already in their books. The already, ability to plant them, the, order. the ability to plant them, yes, we already placed an open order. The ability to plant them, I feel, is totally secure, and I feel confident that uh, with the, the board and you know people going forward, this is planting trees for the future. Uh, we can lock up that land, put it back to oxygen producing native species, cool the land. There's no better way that you know science can do than to plant North Atlantic cedars, create a peat bed to infiltrate water, to lock up the resources, to stop pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, drain off from roads. When you plant a bog, you put sand on the peat bed. All the particulates migrate through it and the hazardous materials and they get trapped in the first half inch of the peat bed. So by creating a peat bed over this bog, you will stop any fast infiltration that pushes things through the water, and you will also mediate infiltration and the water recharging. Okay, I have a question. April 9th, DPW agenda, what time? I'm on whatever time they want. Rachel? Three, 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 I think it's 3.45. Oh, is it that early? Yeah, because I'm excellent. Making, that meeting's at that's meetings, I think, believe we start at three. That What's meeting. the annual rate of growth of those trees? So uh, depending on where you plant them. I believe so, but I can f I can find that out for you. All right, maybe Rachel will send us an email reminder with time. Okay, what time we got? We got a few minutes. It's a slow clock. Oh, okay. one tree. Okay. So the whole thing is one biosystem. These trees lock their roots together and secure the land that they don't blow over. And uh, maybe in 350 years, the top will blow and the big eagle will in there, you know? I just have one question. Yeah. Um, does this retain more water than the bog would normally? Or? No, it mitigates infiltration. Okay. It slows it down, so it actually will run off a little more, absorb evenly, and it uh, literally creates a cooler environment and puts back the correct environment. Okay. Cause it, and it's a long-term lockup of controlling that land for hydraulics, native vegetation comes in around them and you recreate basically what was here was from Canada to Florida Panhandle, a North American to Florida East Coast intercoastal rainforest anywhere from the coast to 10 miles to 20 miles inland, one strip of trees interlocked and it was a game changer for our environment. It produces oxygen 24-7, it's an evergreen. They lock in, they become one system, so it's very viable to disease, and so far there is nothing that's attacking these trees, so far. So it's a tree that you can put in without safeguarding, very minimal nutri nutrient value, and uh, it's really a no-brainer. This is, this is really a great project. Okay, the only, I, unfortunately I have one other question. No, no problem. The water table that the bog is right now yep. has to be dropped lower than it is right oh, yes. now. No, no, I'm just, uh, and, the and reason doing, I'm telling you this, no, I'm, I'm concerned. the drainage, that the new drainage yeah, installed right now right. is underwater. Oh, I know. That's why we keep pulling the boards. Somebody keeps putting the boards back in, and I keep pulling them. The boards? I thought they had a steel plate on top of those. No, no, that's the ones upstream. Or the boards at the, the little oh, shack. Somebody's pulling them at the little shack? Yeah, I, I pulled them at the little shack because oh, no, it's flooded out. The, somebody put them in, you're saying? Somebody put them in like three times and I've pulled them back out. Un unknowing to me. I go and yeah. clear out the litter. That's all I do. I, I, I don't know. So, but okay, I, so I see it rise, so I uh, pull the boards out. Oh, no, up. that's what we need to do. Um, um, so we just that, th that's just the DPW's cause, and they'll probably yeah, ask you about that next yes. week. Oh, no, that's that oh, no. It's got to stay, the stay low. They're in control of the water level. Yeah. I personally don't like to see it flood over because we have a herring problem also. Yep. And I have to net off that. And um, I don't know if anybody has any plans to net off the, just change the subject quick. They know it's still that area. The um, drainage for the Route 14 project is underwater. And when it flows out, the herring are going to want to go into it because of the warm water. Um, does anybody have any plans to address that issue, or is that going to be for the herring fisheries to jump on it and take action? Just I don't want to put it. Up I know there it's right not away. on our agenda. Okay, so we have to do it this week. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, it's seven twenty, so we can suspend this and come back to it afterwards. Yep. What do you okay. Mean? I think we're done. I mean, I am. Okay. I just would like Bob if you could be there to be supportive of this project. And you know. it's a Monday. Right. April ninth. Give me in on Monday night. On the ninth. On the ninth, yeah. 
I have. I, I teach have. at three o'clock. Okay, could you write a draft a letter in support? The commissioner will do that. No, that's what I'm saying. And have you? Yep. I'm just asking if you support. Yep. Ultimately, that's what I'm doing. I think it's a good project for everybody. Well. Okay. So our next one, next hearing is at 7:20. Request of determination of uh, uh, yeah, no, applicability. Applicability. <laughs> route three, route 14 and 53, route 53, route 53 and 139. And 139, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? My name is Mike Clements. I'm uh, with the MassDOT Highway Division, uh, District 5 Clinton. And what we have is an idea before you to um, trim trees within the state highway layout on Route 3, Routes uh, 14, Routes uh, 53, and yeah, where are they? 139. Uh -oh. Whole bunch of them. Yep. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Lost it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 14, 53, 53, 53, 139, and of course 139. Um, the reason why we're here is uh, to trim the trees. We're, we've got a project that's and we're starting up the spring to resurface Route 3, um, and we want to be able to do the tree trimming on that project um, currently to the, with the resurfacing. So we'd like to get going on that um, probably in May, May time frame. Um, so that's why I'm here tonight to hopefully get your approval to go ahead and uh, enable them to trim the trees on Route 3. Route 3 is a um, divided highway, of course, um, and on divided highways, we're looking to trim out to 20 feet off the roadway edge along the main line on each side, northbound and southbound, and then on the ramps we're going 15 feet along the ramps up to the roadway, you know, up to the intersecting uh, roadway, and, the ro and if that roadway is a um, secondary road, we'll be trimming 10 feet on, on that. All the secondary roads are we doing 10 feet trimming beyond roadway service or um, if the sidewalk's 10 feet beyond the sidewalk, if the, if the State Highway Layout is sufficient. If it's not sufficient, we only go to State Highway Layout. Um, you know, we, we, we believe it's a necessary project. We, we've, you know, we've, we've seen what's happened the past few uh, weeks here, and uh, there's been a lot of trees down, and we, you know, we'd like to, you know, try to bring the roadway back into a, where we have a safe zone off the roadway surface so people can, you know, can maneuver if they go off the roadway, and also if there is a tree that falls, hopefully, they, you know, there is some maneuvering room for them to not you bought a tree. Not that um, falling trees are a problem. <laughs> oh, they have been lately, I guess. <laughs> are those measurements the same as what they are now? Just that they need to be turned back, or is it, are they increased limits? The, the limit is basically the be the end of the bottom of the slope of the highways um, is where the, the limit is. Is that how they are now? Um, they, they have grown back in since the last time we trimmed. We trimmed, we had a, a uh, day of determination with you folks, I believe, back in 2010, expired. I think in 2015, because we had the, you know, the extensions there, and I believe, yeah, it was, I think it was 2015, might have been 2016 or 17, actually. But in any case, you know, we want to be, we knew let's get that going again, so we have your approval and your, you know, your support to go ahead and trim what we need to trim. Question? Um, Does we, it is just, and again, we're, we're just flush cutting. We're not doing any stumping or any, you know, earth disturbance. It's just, uh, you know, it's maintenance. It's just maintenance. Right. Does out. that described yeah. project oh. fall into the exclusions? Uh, the I'm not sure it falls into the exclusion, but it does. It's, it's something we've always done. Yeah. Yeah. And we've always, in town, not just in your highway, yeah. we always say if a tree is dangerous, you can cut it down as long as you don't pull the root. And any tree that close to the highway is dangerous. So I think that would fall into our general thing. That yeah. I mean, okay. that, the exclusion is six feet. That's why we're that's why we're buying the, the okay. I'm a tree guy, I like trees, but the bottom line is on the highway, big trees kill people when they go yes. off the road, even when they go off the road, not yes. the tree going off yes. the road. So smaller trees break a car slowly. Big trees hurt people. Yes. So we you know, we we're trying to get ahead of it hopefully. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think I do too. I like I'm moving really close. Second. Okay. Everybody? Aye. 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 Sounds like you're all set, but thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just have my sheet of paper back? Sure, you may. Negative. Sorry, I, I have I have the idea here somewhere, but it, you know, yeah. 
<laughs> We're going to go with a negative three, Rachel. We need a second. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I need a second. Have a good night, Second. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor. All, All in right. favor of negative three? Good. Aye. 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 Okay. Good. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm still on the buffer. We got five minutes. Anybody got anything else they'd like to talk about? I do, and I can't remember. No, we don't. I don't think we need five minutes. I think we can read the letter because we aren't going to hold it here. Oh, that's right, too. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go with whatever time it is. Notice of intent of 40 new, 49 Canoe Club, Moberg, DE file, SE 561012. Uh, nobody's here tonight. On behalf of the applicant, Don Moberg, we would like to request a continuance of the public hearing for above reference project. This is schedu scheduled for tonight, March 26th, until date in near future to allow natural heritage time to review information sent by botanist Michael Ball, the principal of Marsh Matters Environmental. Once we have a letter from Natural Heritage Place, we will forward it along for your review and discussion about closing the hearing. Vote. We uh, put it off for two. April 9th at 7.30. Yeah. You may need to be, no, we have to wait until we get our letter. Yeah, but that's, so we'll just say that for our next. Yep. We'll continue with okay. okay. further okay. discussion the later. So I'll second that motion to continue. Yes. Thank you. Everybody? Aye. 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 Good. Is that it? Yeah. Um, real quick, just a minute. Um, just to further up with the uh, garden club, they want to lead the pruning of the pear trees in this town, starting in the center, and they'll be looking for areas to get granting and fundraising and try to save <coughs> the, Excuse me. the trees that the state planted on the highways that are breaking out the ornamental pear trees that are breaking out all over the center. They break out. They're oh, a grafted I'm, tree, and they're all within ten years of. Are gone. we just doing? Is there any left? this out here? Or <laughs> deve <laughs> developments too. Yes, develop all over the town, starting in the center, because number one, if you don't prune, they fall in the street. Oh yeah. And if you do prune them, they they blow them out. They're, that's what has to be. Twenty five percent of those trees, the tops have to be cut off, where they're arcing over. They'll look a little ugly for a year or two, but they'll fill in beautifully, and it'll set the program for lower weight on the trees and a lot less damage. So they want to lead that process if possible and work towards that in the near future. I, uh, I don't think that falls entirely under us. Right. The only ones that would would be the ones that are within it. What I would suggest is that they do similar to what the highway just did now. Yes. Come in for an IDA that yeah. says, yes, we can trim trees. And we're not saying you can trim them all, but you can right. trim no. You know, you can trim them as far as we're concerned in our area and then have a professional committee. Someone has to decide it. whose responsibility the trees really are. Right. Probably I, I believe right the now they fall under the DPW. It's so DPW, you're yeah. probably going to have to seek permission yep. from the board of uh, commissioners. Over yep. there well, they're they're going to lead the project, not myself. Yep. They want to get on that and be in the garden club. I think it's a good process for them to uh, show their muscles a little bit and get something done. They really want to do things. Huh? I think it's a great way to um, say The tree guys will yeah. be more than happy with help. <laughs> Delegate. Very good. Okay, that was it. I'm done. That it? Oh, nice. You got anything, Bob? Move it close. I can't second it. I'll second. second. <laughs> good. Thank you. Have a good night. Well, does this mean that they, these guys were they were denied the project by the state? Is that how? Oh, no, it? no. What they're saying is they're the top one is they're all nasty of challenging our. And approval this one is for and we kind of expected that. Yeah. 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 We kind of expected that. that. So now it goes to the goes to DEP and it goes through that whole series of does DEP agree with us? Does it agree with them? Who does what? Where? Satisfying. We all already parts. we already voted a few meetings ago a sum of money to hire professionals because we figured this was coming up. And so this just came in today, so there'll be a strategy meeting among some of the department heads tomorrow or the next day to see how, how the town is going to stand against the appeal. Right. But most probably we'll, we'll be defending ourselves along with other professional help. Good.
that's always good for your professional health. Yeah. Anybody else want to look at that? So I read it. Okay.